Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy, the largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, it's the time of year we're going to take our RVs out and we're actually going to go camping and with that comes barbecuing. And there's always some confusion when it comes to transporting propane. So let me go over uh, some of the information that we know uh, to legally transport the propane. So let's first cover the uh, portable cylinders. Now those are uh, regulated by the DOT. This is why we call them the Department of Transportation or the DOT cylinders. All right, the Department of Transportation has a few rules. Now, I remember the last time I did this video, a lot of you kind of jumped all over me. I'm the messenger. I'm the one that has to crack open the books. I'm the one certified in it, have to read all that stuff. I'm communicating it to you. I'm taking this jumbled mess and giving it to you. And then you decide what you do with it from there. So that way we can be good. First and foremost, a DOT cylinder needs to be transported in the upright position. Okay, we can't lay it on its side. There are some cylinders that look DOT, but they are built specifically to sit on the side, i.e. those that may actually go on, say, a propane forklift or something like that. But I'm talking about your portable DOT cylinder, your, your 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound tanks. Ha, -ha dang it, I called it a tank. Cylinder. All right, because of the high pressure relief valve sitting up top, the dip tube sticking in about 20%, dip tube's nothing but a straw. What we want to actually vacate if there's too much pressure built up is the vapors. Now propane, we're transporting it as a liquid. And when it's a liquid, it's 270 times more potent than a vapor. And when we lay it on the side, if there's too much pressure from the heat, direct sunlight or whatnot, that overpressure valve releases. If the dip tube is actually in the liquid propane, then you're gonna get 270 times more propane out of that valve. So the DOT says put that in the upright position. Not only that, we have to strap it down and the strap, whatever tie device we have, has to be strong enough to support eight times the total weight of that DOT cylinder. So you have the weight of the cylinder plus the fill weight of the product. So your bungee cords, your, you know, your little um, milk crates that you put them in, those don't suffice. Now, I know you're going to do it. It's still up to you. I'm just telling you what the rules are. Okay. Lastly, uh, for you preppers out there, DOT says no more than 90 pounds that you can transport without having a license. Now that is the DOT cylinder. Those are the things that you're looking for. We can talk about proper filling techniques and everything else. Each state regulates how they're to be filled up. Right now in Texas, they have to be filled up based on weight. The DOT cylinder, I have to put it on the scale and fill it up. Your state may be different, so I can't speak to that. But transportation, which is you, upright position, strapped down, right? Now, for those of you driving a motor coach of some sort and you have an ASME tank, right, a true tank, well, those who can't fill up by weight, there's not much that you need to do when we're talking transporting other than I want you to give a good visual. I want you to look under that tank if it's exposed to the road. If it's exposed to the road, say you have an older RV and there's no skid plate under your uh, ASME tank, it may be susceptible to road rash. What we're looking for is that road rash. All right, we need to clean off all that rust and go ahead and uh, spray paint it. At least get some more rust repellent on there. So some rust oleum or something like that. You want to keep that good and fresh. Now, for those of you that are looking at, you know, some older cylinders or older tanks, on the tanks, the ASME tanks, we don't need to recertify. We just need to make sure that they don't leak. But let's go back to those um, cylinders. On those cylinders, they're good for 10 years right now. The current regulation is 10 years. After that, we need to exchange them. And guess what, guys? It's actually perfectly legal for you to take your 20-pound cylinders and exchange them, right? The exchanging company is going to take those back. They're going to recertify those if they can and put it out in service. It doesn't hurt a thing to do that. And there's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video, Roll the bloopers. Want to first? Um, 
All right, so it's this time of summer. Time of summer? Shoot, let's try that again. You know, it's funny. I had a lot of people say that I could sing really well. So if this tech thing don't work out, watch out. Todd's gonna bring the smooth vocals to your channel.